Hey everyone, it's Jill the Wandering Stamper. Today we're gonna get into fall. The windows are open, it's cooling off, it's really getting nice. So we're gonna have some fun with Halloween. I'm gonna show you how to make the cutest bay window card. We're gonna do some watercoloring on watercolor paper, which will give it a really unique background on our bay window card. So I will point the camera down and we'll get started on this fun card to make. All right. We are going to be using some fun colors. I've pulled some white card, basic white cardstock, Cajun Craze, Pumpkin Pie, and some designer series paper that comes from Earth and Elegance. I just really like these colors together. We've got coordinating ink pads, and of course, the star of the show, the Pick of the, Pat, Pick of the Patch stamp set and the coordinating uh, builder punch. So we're going to use these products to make the cutest bay window card. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do our watercolor painting first because I want to give it a chance to dry while we're making the rest of the card. You want to cut your designer series paper three and a half inches by four inches. And then after it dries, we'll be cutting that a bit. So there is our watercolor paper. Watercolor paper has, you, you have to use watercolor paper on watercoloring. It's just, not going to work any other way. You want to have something to protect your surface and then I'm using a spritzer with water in it and an aqua painter. So that's all you need to get going. So I'm going to start out with the pretty peacock and what I want to do is build and make sure when you color your paper is in portrait portrait orientation, not landscape. So it needs to be taller than it is wide. So we're gonna lay that there. I'm gonna start with Pretty Peacock because I wanna build sort of grass and then like, I don't know, trees or brown in the middle and then sort of a pumpkin pie sky. So that that's my vision. You do however you, however you want to do it is fine. That's how I prefer. I'm giving my stamp sets a squeeze. Whoops. So that there's nice uh, there's a nice amount of ink there. I don't know why I can't talk right now. So I've got that and then I have my spritzer here. Hopefully there's enough water in that. And I'm just going to spritz the bottom of my paper lightly and leave a little bit of water on there and just do however much you want. I'm going to go about a third of the way up and it's okay if it bleeds, it just makes it look cool. And then you also want to have some tissues or paper towels nearby to wipe your surface. All right, so all I'm going to do, make sure my brush is clean, is I'm going to pick up some of this ink and then I'm just going to start adding it to where I spritz the water. And as you can see, the water just kind of makes it bleed around. So I just keep doing this until I'm happy with the color. This is where you get to channel your inner Monet or your inner Picasso. So you just keep adding color, smushing it around. The, the color will only go where the water is. So if you don't have any water up here, it's not gonna bleed up there until you add more water. So you can kind of layer and keep adding things until it looks the way you want. You can even go back and add more water. I like to have a little variation of color. So I'll add some little dark spots here and there. So that looks pretty good. There's really no wrong or right to this. It's so pretty. All right, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off and then I'm squeezing water as I wipe it. And I'm gonna do this until I get it clean. 
the blue is really the darkest thing we're working with so it takes a little bit more but see as you can see my brush is now clean nothing's coming off well okay a little bit's coming off here let's add a little more you just want to get your brush most of the color off so as you can see now it's it's clean all right so I'm going to close up this ink and the next one I'm going to use is Cajun Craze because we're using all the same colors we used for paper and as you can see I've got a nice little blob of water in, or ink in there so I'm going to add some more water to my paper to the next third like that it's going to bleed a little which I think is really cool and then I'm just going to start adding in my color look how this is so therapeutic to me I will sit and do watercolor painting on cardstock and listen to music in my airpods my earbuds and just kind of lose myself in it it's it's just really relaxing to me to sit here and and do this now if you find you have like a little too much water just tap it off it's fine and it'll run a little but it's okay I think it looks cool that way this is definitely not for someone who is a perfectionist and has to have everything exactly a certain way this is more freeform and the more you do it the easier it is because you kind of learn what what works for you but I'm just letting it all flow together now if you wanted to you could also add copper clay copper clay goes good with this goes well with this I always tell my kids super Superman does good okay we're gonna add a little bit of dark here and there I just like to have a little bit of some dark in there all right that looks good now we are going to clean off our brush again as good as we can I'm almost out of water in this brush so it's taking a little longer to clean but just get most of it we're doing pumpkin pie next so see as you can see now the color's gone it's not coming out anymore so you just give it a few squeezes especially when you use a really vibrant color it takes a little bit more now this stamp pad is one of the original old stamp pads so I need to juice it up again I should probably just buy a new one um, but it still works all right we're gonna add some water now to our last section okay it's gonna bleed a little which is fine no big deal and now I'm just adding pumpkin pie and these colors they just look like fall so we're just adding that color in there letting everything bleed gives it more interest now if I had a juicier stamp pad this would probably be a little more vivid but it's fine I try not to overthink it too much because sometimes when you overthink what you're doing you end up messing it up so I just kind of let it go so that looks pretty good I'm gonna add a little bit more down here and I'm just looking to make sure I don't have any white spots you could do this and leave a border but because of the style of this card I didn't really want to leave a border so if you only use your aqua painter and don't get water on the edges you could actually leave a white border very easily on this because the the ink will not bleed where there isn't water so if you want that just don't get the edges wet okay so I'm gonna clean my brush off And you just kind of do this until it runs clear and that's good it's all clear now I don't like to put my brushes away with ink on them because I will forget what I did before so that's done I'm gonna set that aside to dry and we'll use our heat gun if we need to get another piece of paper 
All right, now we're re ready to get started on the actual card. Out of the way. Okay, to start this card, we're gonna need to do our background first, and you're going to cut a sheet of paper four and a quarter by 11, so you're cutting it in half. I've already got one cut, so I'm not gonna do that. We don't like to waste paper around here, right? So that is four and a quarter by 11 inches, okay? So once you have that cut, we're gonna do some scoring. So the first score we're gonna do is at a quarter inch. All right, and then the next score line is going to be at one and a half inches. And then three and a quarter inches. And then four and a half inches. And then finally, five and a half inches. Okay, so there's, there's our score line. So a quarter inch, one and a half inches, three and a quarter inches, four and a half inches, and five and a half inches. All right, we'll set that aside. And the next thing we want to do is cut the pieces for our first layer on the front. So we're going to cut two at seven, seven eighth inch by four and an eighth. So first I'm going to just make sure this is four and an eighth. This is a scrap piece I had, so we're going to start out cutting this. Let's see if we need some more. So four, So once you have it all at four and an eighth, then you're just cutting two at seven eighth inches. So there's one. Here's two. And then we're cutting an, uh, two of them at one and an eighth by four and a an eighth. Everything's four and an eighth. So one and an eighth. Okay. And then we're going to do one at one and five eighths. It's a great way to use your half sheets of paper. Okay. So we've got two of these at seven eighths by four and an eighth. We've got two of these at one and an eighth by four and an eighth, and we have one at one and five eighths by four and an eighth. All right, we're gonna set those aside. And then I took a scrap of designer series paper, and this comes from Earth and Elegance. I just really like this pretty peacock color. So we're going to cut two pieces at three quarter inches by four inches. So I'm going to just cut this at four inches using my scraps today. And then we're going to cut this at three quarter inches. And I'm, there is a one inch mark over here, so I'm going to use it over here so I can hold my paper on my left. So three quarters and three quarters. All right, so we have two pieces that are three quarters by four inches. We're gonna set those aside. So that's all of our, actually, it's not all of our cutting. We have to do our inside. So our inside piece is going to be, I'm gonna make it orange. This is our inside where we're gonna put our sentiment. So that is gonna be three and three eighths by four and an eighth. Let's see, I'm just gonna cut it four and an eighth because I will probably make some more of these cards and three and three eighths. Okay. And then finally, we're gonna take white and we are gonna cut white at three and a quarter by four inches. Let's see how wide that is. Three and a quarter by four inches. So these are going to layer together like that. All right, that's all of our cutting. All right, now to make this card. So we're gonna start out with our card base. And I'm gonna get my silicone mat. 
So you have basically, you're going to fold the card in half. There's a score line that is at the five and a half inch. So you're going to score it. It's a great time to make sure your paper is straight. Because you want that nice and straight. So before you use your bone folder, just kind of match up your edges and make sure that's nice and straight. So now you have all the rest of your score marks showing. So I'm going to take the score mark closest to the fold and I'm going to fold the card up this way. Okay, that's a valley fold. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing here. The same thing here. So we're making them all go in and then this last little quarter inch fold is going to fold towards you out. Okay, and the reason we're doing it that way is because that's what's going to create our bay window. See? Like that. So once you have all the scoring done, open it back up and that very first section that we scored, we're going to glue that. So I'm just going to get my liquid glue and just don't use too much because you don't want to go over your edges. Put some liquid glue in there and then I'm going to fold that down and just hold it for a second. So we're gluing this piece down. This is the only part we're going to glue and so then that will keep our bay window shape nicely and it still folds flat. So we've got that glued so now we're going to start layering the rest of our pieces. So we have our our two pretty peacocks are going to layer on the two thinnest orange uh, pumpkin pie strips. So those are going to go there. And one thing we need to do, we're going to make sure our paper is dry. What I like to do is I'll just grab my heat tool and just finish it off a little bit. And if you do the back side, as it dries, it will flatten out. It's okay if it's a little crooked, you're going to be using adhesive on it. So I just give it a little, it's good. Just want it mostly dry. All right, now that that's dry, it's nice and straight. Now, if you wanted to, you could add Wink of Stella to this now and make it sparkly if you wanted to. That would look really pretty. So we're going to have it lands, uh, portrait size so it's taller than it is wide. And we're going to cut these into three pieces, and these are going to go on the front of our bay window. So you're going to cut, and you want to cut these in consecutive pieces, one after the other. So your scene stays, stays uh, equal. So there's our first one at one inch. Then the next one is going to be cut at one, at one and a half inches. And then naturally the last one becomes an inch. That's what's left. Okay. So we're going to lay these in order so we don't get them mixed up. It really, I really doubt anybody would notice if you did get them mixed up, but let's do it right the first time. All right, so now we're going to start gluing. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little adhesive to the this outside piece. I'm going to work from my left to my right, and you'll see why in just a moment. So you just want to center those on there. It's not too straight, but that's okay. I'm just adding a little bit and centering that. If you kind of get the top where you want it, then and hold it at the top, you can sort of manipulate it the rest of the way down to make sure it's pretty straight. All right, so we're going to set those two aside. Now we're going to grab our our uh, piece that this piece fits on. If you're not sure, just lay your pieces out like this so you know you're grabbing the right pieces. So this is our watercolor paper. It's nice and dry now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get that layered on there and then just kind of get it where I want it and paste that down. That's it. When I watercolor, I go. I have my uh, music playing, and I usually pick some type of creative playlist. You know, if you type in creative playlist, you get some really interesting 
stuff. So I just sit and listen to that in my ears and kind of get lost in whatever I'm doing. And ugh, it's just so relaxing. Sometimes you just need to unwind a little that way, right? All right, there's all of our pieces. So now we're gonna work on layering these. Now I'm gonna work left to right because we have to do something special with the piece on the very end. So I'm simply gonna keep doing what I did before. I'm gonna add my adhesive to this piece now. Just like that. And make sure that you're putting your watercolor art the right direction. Don't get it flipped upside down. You want it all to be the same. And then I also just kind of give it one more check, make sure I've got it in order. And then I'm just lining the top edge with this one and they fit perfectly between your score lines. Make sure you don't go over a score line. That's, you want to be mindful of where your score lines are. I have a very creative mother-in-law who does beautiful painting. And I would love to see what she would do with this card. Adele, you have to share it when you do it, because I know you're gonna do one of these. She's so good at painting that I bet her watercolor will look like a Monet painting. She's, she's that good, let me tell you. And we are gonna be painting soon, I'm sure, together. All right, so here's that last watercolor panel. Look how pretty that is together. So now we need to create the mechanism that keeps this bay window open. So what you want to do, move this out of the way so you can see better, is place your piece of paper. This little tab is what is going to go under this piece to hold it, and we're going to be using some dimensionals. So what you want to do is align your paper where you think you're going to glue, adhere it down, and then have that little tab under there. And then when you get it where you like it, just hold it, fold it down and hold it. And what I like to do is just take my pencil because it really, the pencil I've found doesn't even show up and just draw a line. So, and if you want to erase it, you can, but I just draw a line. All right. And then I'm going to flip it open and just use a stamp pad or something. You don't want it to flip back open because we're going to be adding dimensionals and we don't want to accidentally stick that. So I'm using my take your pick tool now, and these are the larger dimensionals, and I'm just going to place them so the straight edge, and I don't want to be too far up because we're going to have a little border showing all the way around, so don't get them too close to the edge. So I'm putting them right up against that line I drew, and I'm just going to stagger them. Just like that. And put one more. Okay. Now what I found works really well is if you take one of your sheets and even the one you're working on, this is a, a sheet where I've used all the middle and I found that if I just cut these little scraps that are on the end, they work really well on this card. So. I cut them and then I'll stagger them because I don't want to remember I don't want to be too close to this bottom edge because we don't want our dimensionals to show and I just do that and it's a great way to use your scrap pieces of dimensionals. Now I have also made this card where I just put adhesive down and and make it stick and it works. I just personally don't like it as much that way. I like the way it's all sticking up. So that's good. So now I'm gonna take all these papers off. This is why I love this take your pick tool because I could never get those off before so neatly. All right, now I'm going to take that piece and sort of figure out where I want it to be. There's a little border. So I kind of, let's move that. Get it as even as possible. That looks good. 
So there we go. And now it fits perfectly. See? All right. So now we're going to work on the front of the card. So let's, I say so a lot. I'm trying really hard not to do that. It's a bad habit. Anybody else have a bad habit like that when they're talking? It annoys me when I watch these videos and realize how many, how many times I said that. All right. So what I want to do, and I'm going to show you a quick tip really fast too. I did do a live with this, but you may not have seen it. So this stamp set comes with a builder punch. And a lot of time we're trying to stamp things and we're trying to use our builder punch and things are getting in the way. So a, a really great trick to use your builder punch is get a scrap piece of paper and punch everything, punch it. And so you get this. And then once you get this, then you can take the stamps that go with it and lay them just like you were putting them on a piece of paper to stamp. You lay them on there just like this. This was like such a game changer and aha moment when I saw somebody did this and I thought, oh my gosh, why have I never known about this? So you lay them on there. And what I like to do is get them all in place and then wiggle it to make sure they're all in there perfectly. Whoops. All right, and then once you get them in place, put your stamp on them. So there you go. And so now when you stamp them, as we're gonna do in a moment, when you stamp them, they're all ready to punch out in your punch and you're not gonna punch over anything you don't wanna punch, if that makes sense. Really, really cool idea. I don't know why I've been stamping for 20 something years and never knew about that trick. So there you go. Maybe you knew, I didn't. Whoops, Woo! I'm so glad we didn't hit our designer shirt or our watercolor paper with that. So I'm just stamping on my pumpkin pie stamp set. Now this is dry and I'm gonna show you why. So we're going to stamp this down and it's not gonna look perfect because this is watercolor paper and it's got a texture, but that's okay because I'm gonna show you why that works. So see, we would hate that normally if we were stamping, right? Let me get this messy stamp out of the way. So we would be pretty upset if that's how our stamp came out. But when you're using watercolor paper, all right, let me wipe this really quick. Once we paint this in with a little water, it's going to be perfect. Oh, look at that. I messed up my, got a little too crazy with it. All right, that's okay. When you clean your stamp pad, the teeny tiny pieces sometimes come off. I am having all kind of problems keeping my paper cutter there today. All right, we're going to grab our aqua painter now. Remember, we cleaned it off. And then you just take your aqua painter with water and just go back over the area you stamped. And what's really cool about it is it almost gives it texture. And, that, and the uh, ink is only going to go where there's water. So you just quickly go over it and it just paints it in. And you get that congruency because we have a watercolor card. We want to make the embellishments we put on it kind of go along with it, right? So this is how you do that. So I'm just dragging that color and I think it's pretty cool how it's got all the texture. I really like that because this card is all about texture. So pretty. So it's perfect just the way it is. You don't really even have to do this leaf because it's small and it's, it's fine. But now what I like to do is grab that Cajun craze that we used earlier and you could add some bits of that in there. And you're, that way you're kind of pulling in some of the other colors in the card. So I'm just adding a little bit of Cajun craze in here. Sort of like shadowing it a little bit. And I'll do it over here, maybe do the bottom. When you're watercoloring, you get total creative license. I love it. All 
All right, I like that. I'm just gonna pull a little bit of extra water in there. So it kind of gives it a little bit more than just plain, plain pumpkin pie. So let's get these out of the way. Quickly clean our brush off. Cap that up. So now we've got that and I'm gonna go ahead and dry it really fast. a second because we didn't use a ton of water now you can just put that in your punch where you like it and see since we did our little trick everything's right where it needs to be Woo! So there's our three pieces. Now you're probably wondering, well, what are you gonna do about the stem? So because the stem fell off, I'm just gonna stamp a couple stems. And I'm gonna stamp them in Pretty Peacock. Keep that continuity, right? And since the stem is at the top of the punch, we can just do that again. Oof, look at this. I'm a mess today. It's all fine until I go to do something on white paper. All right, so that's done. Let's set that aside. And so now all I have to do, since the stems are at the top, is just punch those out. No problem. One stem. And stems there's our stems all right so now we're going to start building the front so before we started I went ahead and used the deckled circle dies and I cut an orange piece and a piece of that designer series paper that's pretty peacock that's gonna go on the front of our card so I'm gonna flip this over and add some adhesive and layer that on there and then I'm going to grab some dimensionals. I'm going to figure out how I want to lay these. And before we get started, I'm going to put a little drop of glue, or you could use a glue dot as well. I just don't have my glue dots out right at the moment. Put a little drop of glue on these stems. And the fun thing is you could do the fat part of the stem showing or the skinny part. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to glue this. Woo! glue this down like that and then this one's going to go a little farther because it's a small pumpkin and it's okay if you get a little too much glue on there because it's not going to show all right so while that's having a moment to dry flip it over see how cute that is i'm going to grab those dimensionals again and i'm going to put a few dimensionals on my big pumpkin take those off. I like to put my big pumpkin on there first. I'll put him about right there. And then I'm going to figure out where I want my little pumpkin. So if I put him here, I'm going to just put a dimensional on this side because we don't want to have him flat on that side since he's going to be raised up on the other side. So I'm going to put that dimensional down and then I'm going to add a little bit of glue over here and then I'm going to layer those. So there we go. Now we have our leaf and we're going to figure out where we want to put the leaf. I kind of like that. I'm going to use a drop of glue this time. I'm going to put them this way, like that. And then I tied a little bow with linen, the linen thread, 
So I'm going to put an itty bitty drop of glue on the back. Which side do I want to be the back? Put, look at this, I'm oozing. I keep moving, we moved our RV again and the elevation makes things blurp. That doesn't happen in Florida, people. Okay, so put a little dry, the good thing is the liquid glue dries clear, so even if you get a little too much, it's okay. So I'm gonna put that there, look how cute that is. Simply adorable. So we're gonna look, give a second for that to dry and then the last thing we want to do is decorate the inside. I am going to do your the pick of the patch. And again, we're going to use the pretty peacock. And I'm going to get, get a little closer so I don't mess this up. Okay. Actually did that straight. And then I think what I'd like to do is close this up, add a pumpkin inside. I really need to get my ink out and ink up my stamp pad. Okay, nice. that came out pretty good. And then I want to add the stem, but one thing I did, and this is a nice little tip for you, is I stamped some extra pumpkins. I mean, really anything will do. Here's an extra. So I'm going to use this little mat, this little pumpkin as a mask because we have that little um, stem. But I don't want the stem to be as tall as it is. I want it to be shorter. And I'm going to use the stubbier end on the top. So I'm going to kind of use that mask so I can make my stem shorter. So see, that kept me from getting ink below the surface of the pumpkin. So there's a little tip for you. And then the last thing I think we're going to do, I have got a messy stamp. Clean the stamp off really quick. Some cleaner. Move this out of the way. Because I made a mess. There's a this cute little crow. We're going to use this crow. And I'm gonna get memento ink. This is a brand new pad, so I have no idea how juicy it's gonna be. I'm gonna stamp him. And I want to make sure he comes out nice and vivid. So I'm going to take my piercing mat and put that down to give it just a little extra cushion. And I'm going to have him standing on this pumpkin. There we go. Look how cute. So by adding that little extra cushion underneath these stamps, it will make the image a little bit more, uh, I guess a little more vivid, a little darker. So that's good. So then the only thing I would do with him is maybe give him a yellow beak because it seems like he needs to have that and maybe a little yellow eye because it is Halloween, right? There we go. I just used an alcohol marker that I had sitting next to me. So that's done. So now we're going to layer this on our orange piece, our uh, pumpkin pie. I keep wanting to say pumpkin spice. Pumpkin pie. All right, now let's start assembling this. So this piece is gonna go in the middle. With just a small narrow margin. Looks good. Perfect. Look how cute. And now we're going to work on the front. So we have our piece right here, but you know what I think I'm gonna do is add a greeting at the top. Instead of adding a tag with the greeting, I think I just wanna add the greeting right there. So let me grab 
this stamp. This says Happy Halloween, which is perfect since this is a Halloween card, right? I should have probably done this before so that if we don't mess anything up. I am going to put my pull this down for a second. There we go. So I just stamped Happy Halloween there. Stick that on my stamp cleaner. So that looks good. And now we're just going to attach this. So when you glue this on, you want to make sure that the glue is only going to go here. So you could do glue, you could do this ex just directly on here if you wanted to, or you could do it in the back, just make sure it's in the middle. So once you get the adhesive on there, just get it centered where you want it and place it down. Oh, look how cute. So you know we've got to have a little bit of bling and we've got to have a little sparkle. So I have clear wink Estella and I'm going to go ahead and color in my pumpkin a little bit just lightly and what it does is it adds some glitter so it's a little bit shimmery so you have a shiny pumpkin. I just think that's fun and it works really well on this watercolor paper. And you just brush it on there. Can't really mess Winka Stella up unless you squeeze too hard and get too much out. Look how pretty. So that, I know you probably can't see that. Um, and you could also do it, I'm going to do it here on this crow and make our crow a little bit sparkly because they're kind of so raveny black that that will look really cool. All right, let him dry. And then last but not least, these are the neutral adhesive back sequins. I really like these and they come in earth tones. So we're going to use this copper clay because as I mentioned before, copper clay goes really good with Cajun craze. And I'm just going to put some around the card. So maybe put one down here. So there we go. Look how pretty this came out. I think it's perfect fall colors. It looks really pretty for Halloween. It's a lot. It's a fun card to make. You get to be relaxed doing your um, water coloring. So listen to your music, but it's just a really pretty card. I'm really happy with that. And let me show you what I also did the other day. This makes a great Christmas card. Here's a, here's another card. This came from the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper, and I used red background paper from the Winter Meadow, I believe, <clears throat> Designer Series paper. Um, when I cut my background, because all of the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series papers are background papers on one side, so you just cut your paper into three and pop it on there. I did go one step further, and I embossed it in an embossing folder with snowflakes and then I'd kind of dab the Wink of Stella on each of the snowflake bumps so that added a nice little bit to it and then I added may you have time to enjoy the quiet moments of the season and pulled in some more of the boho blue with the tree super pretty card and you can have so much fun with all the different designs here's another one I haven't done, finished the front but you can see the designer series paper, how pretty it is on there. And I pulled in some pink because there's pink in that sunset. So if you want to make these for Christmas, it's a super fun way to create a card for Christmas as well. So I hope you like this card. I love this color. This has actually ended up being my favorite. I wasn't sure how this would come out and I just, I fell in love with it. Um, so let me know which one you like the best and I will put all of the cutting instructions and links to everything down below and it will be on my blog wandering uh, on my website wanderingstamper.com and just go to my blog and all of my videos will be on there. If you want to make sure that you never miss one of these videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a like so that um, I know you've seen it and I love to interact with um, the comments so please leave me a comment let me know what you think 
and I hope to see you again next Wednesday to have some more fun camping or camping stamping. I'm camping. Hopefully you're stamping. I'm Jill the Wandering Stamper. Have a great day and find some time to craft today.